Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This Thursday morning, thankful to God to come together with you again today for the thought for the day. Um, as I went through the book of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is giving uh, the predictions of the end of the age. And for, I just want to make it clear that we are not to predict the end of the world when the day or the hour is going to happen. Many people have done that in the past and have failed. However, we can know the signs of the times and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given us some, a few list of things that will be happening before his return. And when we begin in the beginning of um, Matthew chapter 24, Christ speaks about the desolation of Jerusalem. This occurred uh, nearly 2,000 years ago and it wasn't until May 14th, 1948 that President Harry Truman announced Israel a free nation again. There was a six-day war in 1967, and then on December 6, 2017, President Trump announced Jerusalem the capital of Israel. What happened in 2017 happened in our lifetime with President Trump uh, is interesting because the year before, he lost the uh, popular vote to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton actually got more votes, but because there's something called the Electoral College here in America, Donald Trump was pronounced the President of the United States, which, which was amazing in the sense that there were so many people against him, uh, the media, the establishments on both parties. Uh, but it reminds me of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, and Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33, where it basically says that man plans their ways, but God directs the steps. Daniel chapter 2, verse 21 tells us that God raises up kings and takes down kings. See, God has a purpose and plan for everything to happen. And if Hillary Clinton had became president, Jerusalem would not have became capital of Israel. And prophecy is being fulfilled according to God's plans. Another thing that would be happening, verse 11, false prophets and false Christ will be getting more and more common. Um, we have in America here, I like to say, false prophets. A false prophet is someone who makes a prediction that just doesn't come true. Their word is not true. And in 2008, Al Gore pronounced that the world would come to an end, former vice president of, under Bill Clinton, said that in 2008 that the world would come to an end if we didn't listen to him and his climate change agenda and global warming, we would be flooded underwater by the year 2015. Well, here we are eight years later, and we're still walking on dry land. There's another politician by the name of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's going around speaking about how the world will be destroyed by fire if we don't listen to her and the other uh, climate change people now by fire. Um, my friends, these, these are prophets in a sense that they're making false predictions. Ultimately, only Christ knows uh, as God in the flesh, um, and the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity knows when the end is going to come. Christ said he did not know because he was speaking in his earthly terms as a human being, but Christ is God in the flesh. Only the triune God knows when the end will come. We do not listen to these folks. Um, we often think of false prophets as religious people, and that is true. We've had people like uh, David Koresh and Marshall Applewhite and Jim Jones, Harold Camping, others who have said the end will come, and, they would, and others would say that they were the Christ. And they were kind of like in the religious world, but we need to be careful of the political leaders we follow. Another thing that would be happening as the end approaches, Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, the love of many will get colder and colder as sin and iniquity abounds. Um, if you have the mind of Christ and you have the eyes of Christ, you can see what's going on in our society today. It's absolutely madness and insane uh, what is going on in our culture, the laws that are being passed, the agendas that are being uh, pursued by people today. Sin is abounding more and more. The love of many is getting colder and colder. I was recently talking to an elderly woman in my neighborhood. She's very old. And she said when she dies, she wants engraved on her stone, nobody cares. 
I feel like that's kind of sad, but it's actually the truth. You go around and you see the family unit that's been shattered. People don't talk and communicate like they used to. Even in the church, there's a sense that nobody really genuinely cares. Everybody's out for their own agenda. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 reminds us that the end will finally come when the gospel goes out to the ends of the earth. Quite a few years ago, I was encouraged to start doing these devotional videos on social media. My daughters, who were very young, you know, younger at the time, said that if you want to share the gospel, go on the internet. For many years, it was the church that was uh, used to share the gospel out to the world, and we should still support our local churches. But here I am, a custodian in a public school that nobody knew a few years ago, and now I go out and do these devotional videos on social media and I get responses from people in Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, the Philippines, uh, parts of Africa and Europe. Who would have thought that you could just go on the internet, share the gospel and be part of the Great Commission? And Christ said, when the gospel goes out to the ends of the earth, the end will come. This is possible because of technology. Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 tells us that the end will come as knowledge increases and people go to and fro. Up until just about 100 years ago, if you wanted to travel to Europe or Africa or India, it would take you days. And even before that, like in the 19th century, it could take you weeks and months. But now with airplanes that we have, we could fly to places around the world and be there in literally just a few hours. Knowledge is increasing. We live in an era of knowledge with technology. When I was growing up in the street, we didn't have the knowledge to know what's going on around the world at your finger, at the end of your finger. You could press a button and just know what's going on. My friends, today, a lot of scripture is being fulfilled. I believe that the end of, Christ, the, the, end of the world and the second coming of Christ is getting closer and closer. Obviously, nobody knows the day or the hour, but we see these signs occurring. And we are to be joyful. Titus chapter 2, verse 13, and 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. To look at those passages of Scripture, we eagerly await the coming of Christ. We're not afraid. This is, this is not our home. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 reminds us that this world is it's beautiful i'm out here i see the trees the grass i look at the sky and the clouds the sun's coming up god created everything beautiful but first john chapter 5 verse 19 tells us that this world is under the sway of the devil being controlled by the devil the system we have a citizenship that is not of this earth we will not hear loud cause like you're hearing right now in heaven we will not have all this disruption once we go to where we truly belong, our citizenship in heaven, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, reminds us of that our citizenship is in heaven. Christ is going to come as a thief. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. We need to be prepared. That's why at the end of Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, this chapter of scripture we're going through today, Christ tells us to be alert, be awake, be watchful. We don't know when that day now is going to come. For 180,000 people every day, Christ will come for them. That's about the average number of people that will die every day. And for those people, Christ has come. They will see Christ. They will be before him either as their savior or judge. I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will remind us that the end is coming. Let us be prepared. And let us get the word of God out together, fulfilling the Great Commission. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Thank you for getting me through this. As you know, I've been dealing with a bad cold, oh Lord, but you are the healer. And you're healing me little by little. And I thank you all for who will see this devotional video. I hope it will be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name. God bless you all.